Hey, what's up, y'all, and welcome to the latest edition of Box Office Talk, which is a day later than I wanted to put it out, but life happens, as we all know. Uh, and I really didn't want it to bleed over into this uh, podcast, but with everything that's going on and what this podcast is about, this particular podcast is about, I necessarily can't do it. You know, it, it, I have to talk about the situation at hand. And so... And so if you're new to Box Office Talk, this is your first time hearing it. The format of it is, is that basically I go over what my predictions were the week prior, what actually won the weekend, and then I go over what movies are coming out this current weekend and give my weekend predictions for this coming weekend and uh, throw in some movie reviews and talk about what's new to rent on the stream as well. And that's really how the format goes. So with this... And everything surrounding everything that's going on, the format is going to be tweaked a little bit, as well as I'm going to give a little bit of an update, just in a little bit or whatever, about this particular podcast on my channel. So, um, first, I just wanted to get into last week's predictions. So, last week's predictions is that I said that Onward was going to be at number one. Hunt was going to be at number two, or The Hunt was supposed to be at number two. Uh, Invisible Man at number three. Bloodshot number four and ending off the uh, top five will be the way back. And I was kind of off because Onward did take the number one spot with uh, 10.6 million. Uh, Bloodshot took the number two spot with 9.17 million. I still believe made it into the top five with 9.10 million at number three. Number four, The Invisible Man uh, took in 5.8 million. And The Hunt rounded everything off. At number five with 5.3 million so um really what stands out is just the box office itself now this has been a record low for the box office is in term and uh, just the numbers and it's like it's crazy just to realize that the box office this current weekend this past weekend had brought in 55.3 million domestically like that that is just like crazy just to kind of like view it it's like that's that's really unprecedented like the stuff that we're going through right now is really unprecedented like uh just to see that it made that that much money you know that's it's really low because onward fell 73 percent since and that was like last seen since uh as far as pixar since the last dinosaur which fell at 59 percent and that's for the second weekend and domestically uh right now is at 61 percent and overseas is uh well over you know uh overseas 41.6 million so altogether it's worldwide total is at 102 million and that is just really like, it's crazy to look at. Now, it's nothing that the movie did. It's just the current circumstances. You know, movies are just failing. Even movies like A Bloodshot that more than likely a lot of people wasn't going to go, it wasn't going to do crazy numbers. Let's just be honest. It wasn't going to do crazy numbers. But a movie like that probably would have made a little bit more than what it made uh, its opening weekend had people, had this not been happening, had people... Uh, been going to the movies and checking out everything else and it's just it's really just due to just the uh, coronavirus it's like people aren't in people aren't going to the movies and so uh for a little while uh amc and regal were basically kind of like falling suit with each other to where they were going to knock down capacity. If it fits 500, it's going to be down to 250. And in a lot of cases, it was even shorter than that to 50 people allowed within the theater. So after a certain while, certain tickets wouldn't be available for a certain showtime and stuff like that. So uh, they were really trying to do precautionary measures when it came to that while still allowing people to enjoy entertainment at the movie theaters. But even myself felt like it wasn't going to last too long, that they were going to eventually have to shut down. Because for one, you got to look at it. Certain movies are, well, a lot of movies are being pulled from their release date. This week was supposed to be A Quiet Place come out. Uh, next week was supposed to be Mulan. I don't know what was supposed to be coming out the week after that, but I looked at it and there's nothing coming out within the next three weeks. 
and then more movies are starting to get pulled from. So you're more than likely going to be looking at five, six, seven weeks, even more of where nothing is coming out in theaters. And so uh, after seeing the last movie I needed to see in theaters, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, ended up finding out that yesterday, AMC and Regal and even Cinemark all said they're closing all of their U.S. uh, theaters temporarily or just into further notice until things start to look like it's getting better and it was like i knew it was going to happen for first of all people aren't going to the movies because of the coronavirus then secondly you're pulling your big movies out of the theater now a lot of people don't really go to the movies like that anyway they only go to the movies to see the movies that they want to see or that look interesting or whatever which is not that many uh throughout the year so when you're pulling major titles like The Quiet Place 2, Mulan, and all these other movies, it's like Fat, uh, F9 and everything else. It's like, what, it, what new movies is there for us to go out to go see? And these next two weeks would have brought in a lot of money. And it's like, there's nothing to see in the movie theater. You know, they're not trying to rush out to go see Onward or nothing like that. So it's like, what can we do? And since it's like, they're not going to be generating too much money. Why even keep the doors open? So they were going to eventually have to close it because there is nothing for people to go to the theaters for, you know, and I, I just knew that. I just knew it. And Monday, I made the decision to go to the show because Tuesday might be too late. So I just went and I was like, when I found out, I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did go. <laughs> I'm glad I did go. Um, but even like I said, like people experience don't even want to go to the theater because of the coronavirus. When I'm sitting in the theater, well, when I was sitting in the theater, like, uh, the last couple times I'm sitting there kind of uncomfortable having that in my mind, even though a movie is supposed to be an escape, like that's just running, running through my mind, you know? And it, it's just, it's crazy. And just on top of that, with all these theaters closing. So, I mean, some of them are still active. I think. Uh, one of the theaters that's near me is New Vision. I believe that they're still open because I looked up and the Adam and Fandango isn't saying, you know, having their like uh, purchasing of the tickets like deactivated or anything else. So certain theaters are still open, but soon, probably today, tomorrow, by the end of this weekend, going to end up starting to follow suit. Uh, you probably might have like some of the smaller chains still stay open, maybe New new uh new vision cinemas is probably still gonna stay open maybe a little bit longer but after a while they're gonna have to close the doors you know there's nothing to you're probably gonna get 10 people throughout the day come in to see movies so you know it's it's not gonna be a pretty sight and uh it's it's, it's just it's really crazy to see um you got uh one of the things that stood out as well as up in the box office and some of the other stuff I'm gonna get into a little bit later as it starts to relate to each other but one of the things that stood out in the box office is I still believe now going back to my predictions of last week um, I didn't think I still believe was going to make it into the top five and I was just sorely wrong I didn't I, I didn't put into perspective that these type of movies are niche movies and they have like a they have its own audience that certain like this theater like these uh movies are gonna bring people in they're faith-based but a lot of them do bring you know a certain audience that want to see these type of stories told on the big screen no matter if it's not that good <laughs> they they like these type of movies and so that's really just kind of like one of the big things that stands out to me uh with it and as far as the movie let me go ahead and get right into just the review of I Still Believe. So, I Still Believe is a faith-based film. And it's about the uh, Christian singer Jeremy Camp and his relationship with this woman who later became his wife. And all the perils that they had to go through with her sickness and trying to overcome and, you know, just have faith in the whole, uh, in her getting better. And... I, this is a movie that wasn't like, I need to go see this movie or had me rushing out. But I, I I tend to give a lot of movies the benefit of the doubt to see if, you know, if it is good or not. And some of them I've been very surprised about. 
Some of them, I'm like, yeah, this is, nah, it wasn't that good. But it stars KJ Apple and uh, Britt Robertson. And just really to get into it, this movie is essentially what you would expect it to be. Um, if you like these type of movies, you're probably going to like this movie. Uh, it is a crowd pleaser and it caters to his audience to just the core. If you are a person that love like romantic type films and you know people loving each other like The Notebook or Titanic or stuff like that or just any of like these like novels that get brought to the big screen, uh, you know, it's you're gonna like this movie and it's if it's you're that audience member, you're going to love it, <laughs> you know, it, and the movie is very cookie cutter, which works against it because even from the beginning, you know, the whole beginning scene and all this stuff, you can tell that it's just very cookie cutter. Like it just seemed like everything is going right. Even when throughout the movie, when stuff is going wrong, it feels like stuff you know that stuff is going to go right. You know, it's just, it's very cookie cutter. It's very family friendly. <laughs> like, it just, they didn't, I felt like they didn't really get into the nick grit of like real life. This is just kind of like how a person perceives love without looking at the negative. It's very, very cookie cutter. And it, it, it does go for the easy to pull on emotions from the characters like it's certain things that happen in this movie where it's like we're gonna do this because we know people are gonna cry we're gonna do this because we know people are gonna be happy we're gonna do this because we know people are going to uh feel you know this type of way and they knew exactly what buttons what strings to pull on and pull at and it was just kind of like an easy pop for those who watch wrestling it's just kind of like a wrestler coming out in a promo talking about like I'm glad to be here in Chicago, Illinois. And if you're in Chicago, you're going to be like, ah, that's an easy pop. And that's what this movie went for as far as the emotion and all that stuff. But I did like the way that the characters did play off of each other. Uh, the, the romance and the chemistry was played better than it was in the photograph, which I am going to review either this week or next week. But I love the the chemistry between the characters in this movie a lot better even though like i said they went for it easily so that you'll like it is you know i did like how they came came across in the uh, movies and uh the interactions and everything else and as far as a faith-based film this really isn't a hard-hitting guy you know referencing all throughout the movie it, it's not that hardcore with it like a lot of other movies that are faith-based are you know, this one, it kind of like when they throw out the guy references or just being like some type of Christian in the movie, it, it seemed like it's forced. Like it's a regular cookie cutter romance film and they just like, OK, we forgot to make it faith based. So let's redo this. But then throw like God up in there or, you know, I got to pray or, you know, stuff like that. It seemed kind of forced. But at the same time, it didn't take away from it for me because if it would have been totally consistent i don't know i, I just I, i'm not a big fan of faith faith-based film I say that five times fast and but the performances was really good i did enjoy them uh but one of the big major flaws of this movie is that it could have been 20 to 30 minutes shorter than what it was and i swear that this movie ended like four to five times before it actually ended after a while, I kind of like, damn, is this movie going to be over? Even looking at it before, you know, I went to go see it, the 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 runtime, two hours and like three to five minutes, it's like, uh, that's kind of too long. And it felt long as hell after a while. After like the first time it felt like it ended, it kept going. And then it felt like it ended again, it kept going. Like, it was just one of those movies where it, it just exceeded more than what it needed to, but... As far as the film, it it was missed for me. You know, uh, if you like, I said, if you like these type of films, you're gonna end up loving this film. And uh, but as far as a movie, yeah, you can skip it. Uh, if it ends up getting put to VOD like certain other films is, or once it comes to DVD, it's no rush to try and check it out. But other things that stood out to me in the box office um, is that. You know, uh, Bloodshot did better than The Hunt. 
that I didn't think that that was gonna happen. Uh, as far as the trailers, uh, the hunt looked a little bit more appealing to me, uh, and I thought that that was gonna do a little bit better. But since it didn't, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe more people because it is a superhero type of origin story and stuff like that. People felt more inclined to want to like, you know, check it out more than the hunt. Uh, and as far as Bloodshot goes, it was a pretty generic type of like movie. It reminded me of a movie that probably should have came out in the early 2000s when like the comic book movie, you know, actually good comic book movies were actually just coming into play and starting off and everything else. It puts me in the same mind frame as closely. You could put it in the lineup with like Daredevil and Elektra and all that stuff. But it's not totally bad, in my opinion. It's not totally bad. But this movie is about a soldier who is killed in combat and is brought back through a tech company that put these nanites in his body and makes him basically superhuman to where he can heal from any gunshot wound and makes him like stronger, faster and, you know, all that stuff. You know, the typical superhero type of uh, tropes and everything else. And so there is kind of like this thing surrounding his memory and everything else that the company may or may not be holding from him and he starts to have to like find out what's really going on what's true and what's not what's real and what's fake and everything else so but i i enjoyed the movie i enjoyed it i didn't think it was as bad as everybody else thought it was i thought it was pretty decent uh vin diesel did a pretty decent job uh, as well as uh, Isa, I think I pronounced Isa, Isa Gonzalez. She did a pretty decent job. Uh, and I thought that this is going to be a hero that was like just unstoppable. Like nothing can stop him. Kind of like uh, if you've seen the movie uh, Alita Battle Angel, I thought it was going to be in that realm to where it was like there was no real type of like threat to this person. Like there was no way that this person could put down and... It was going to take the fun out of it, but I was kind of like off on that because it wasn't that. Uh, as far as the bad guys, the bad guys were just bad guys. There was no type of like investment in what they were doing and just like, you know, I don't know. Like it's just the generic type of bad guy. But I did like Guy Pierce in his role. He did put off the role great. But as far as the character... Like I said, just a regular bad guy. The CG was decent enough. Uh, it wasn't the greatest type of CG, but it worked for what they were doing. I really did like it. I enjoyed it. And Lamorne Moore was a highlight in the movie. I really did enjoy his performance and all the scenes that he were in. He didn't steal a scene, but he was a comic relief that actually made the movie just a tad bit better. Uh, the chase scene was dope. I kind of like, it wasn't like, up there as far as the chase scene up in you know gemini man but it was close to it it was it was dope as hell and the elevator fight at the end was pretty good i did enjoy the hell out of it this is like i said a generic action film but a film that if you want to check it out i'll give it a pass i say it is a hit for me but it does toe that line of a miss. I did find some real enjoyment out of the movie. And I think that if you like these type of movies or if you, you know, the generic type of action films and stuff like that, you will probably end up liking this. And it's definitely worth a check out. Don't get me wrong. It's not up there to like the M uh, MCU type films. It's not something that's going to be looked back as like something to kind of like emulate. But it is... Definitely, it does have some entertainment value to it. But other than that, those are the only things that really stood out to me as far as like uh, the box office five and uh, all that stuff. Um, and this will be the portion of the podcast where I'll be talking about the upcoming movies that's coming out this weekend and what will win the weekend within the top five and do the same thing for next uh, week or whatever episode. But since certain circumstances have came about, 
I can't really get into that because there is nothing coming out this week nor next week and all that stuff. Uh, and so basically what I'm just going to talk about is new to rent on the stream, which in a sense is coming out this week. Uh, so um, as far as yesterday went, Jumanji the Next Level, Richard Jewell and Black Christmas all came out to uh, rent on the stream. So if you are curious about those movies, definitely go check it out. I haven't got reviews on any of those movies. I will be putting out a review for Jumanji either this week or next week. I haven't made up my mind. Richard Jewell, I'm going to do the review for that next week. And Black Christmas, that's going to be a part of my podcast, The Countdown, where I'm counting down my best and worst movies of 2019. And that will be happening within the next few weeks. So uh, watch out for that. But as far as this Friday, we will have movies like Emma, The Hunt, and Invisible Man coming out to VOD for rental for $20. And that brings up to like what uh, the movie, certain movie companies are doing. So Universal came out and said that they were going to release certain movies that are in theaters right at this moment available for, you know, rental on home for home viewing and everything else. And those three movies are the movies that they are releasing for home viewing starting this Friday for $20 for 48 hour period. I'm not entirely sure if it's right when you uh, made the purchase for 48 hours or if it's like once you start watching it because if you were if you haven't rented anything on google play or anything like that when you rent something you keep it for 30 days but once you start watching it it's a whole 48 hours from the time you start to watching it so more than likely since it's certain certain circumstances surrounding it and certain movies are relatively or just really new like the hunt and emma they're probably from the purchase time it's probably going to be 48 hours they're probably not going to let you keep it for 30 days or whatnot and other another studio is following suit um wb is releasing birds of prey early for vod um as like as soon as like next week on tuesday so you'll be able to watch that at home as well as the gentleman is being released next week on tuesday so uh if you haven't seen that which if you uh haven't seen it uh definitely check it out uh, i do have my review up on my channel i will leave a link in the description of all the reviews that i have for these movies i'm talking about on this podcast in the link in the description below so uh you can go to check that out and as far as like other movies you got trolls world tour that's supposed to be dropping on the 10th of next month and they're going to make it available on that same day to rent for home viewing. Uh, pending like the movie theaters be closed and everything else. Which they more than likely may still be closed around that time. More than likely. Uh, and so you'll be able to watch that at home. So if you got kids and all that stuff, that'll be a good thing for them. And Disney Plus is doing things as well. They're releasing certain movies earlier than what they were supposed to be released on the format uh frozen 2 was one of those movies and so if you haven't seen that and you like that movie go check it out i haven't got my review on it for it but yet but uh yeah that is on disney plus and i i i can only imagine that certain not every movie studio for every single movie but a lot of movies is going to start probably doing that you know, if it's like a smaller movie like My Spy or something like that, they probably might make it available for rental the same day that it comes out, just like Trolls World Tour. You know, a 48-hour period, blah, 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 $20 and all that stuff. I mean, there's really nothing more that they can do. The theaters are closed, and the ones that are open aren't really getting too many people because people are staying at home and not really trying to go to a movie theater so yeah uh as far as that go yeah man it's it's crazy but speaking of the uh vod let's i'm gonna go ahead and review the hunt since that is a movie coming out friday uh if you haven't seen it here's a reason to see it or not to see it now the hunt is about some people who wake up gagged and stuff and they end up finding out that they're being hunted by other people and they have to try to 
get out of this situation, which is cut and dry and everything else. Uh, this movie was supposed to come out last year, September 27, but got pushed to this year because of whole controversy surrounding it and everything else or uh, whatnot. But, I mean, this movie, the one, I guess you could say, major, 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 and I don't want to start it off with this, but one of the major, major, major flaws about this movie is that it has a political theme to it that is overbearing and overwhelming throughout the whole picture. It's like, literally, this was made with a political agenda. Now, for those who don't like those type of movies or when people do that in their art and all that stuff, this is one of those movies that really do it. It is very heavy-handed with it. Um, a lot of people might find enjoyment out of it. A lot of people might not care and just look at the movie as the movie like I did. Or a lot of people might look at that and be like, it just takes them out of the movie. So if you're not a big fan of stuff being done that way or movies that are made in that type of sense for that, that has an agenda, I guess you could say you're not going to like this. But this is one of those movies that really do not takes itself serious at all. It knows what it is and it like just capitalizes on that. From a lot of times in movies, you can tell what you're in from from the first scene. If the first scene is ridiculous or dumb or whatever, more than likely the rest of the movie is going to be that way. And this movie was that. Uh, from the first scene, it really gave away what the tone of the movie was. And it was just ridiculous. So I was like, okay, this is what the movie is. I'm bracing myself in for this. And that's what I was in for. And that's what I expected. And it gave me nothing less. This movie is gory as hell. If you like them type of movies, this is like that type of movie for you. The fight scenes are gory. The action in it is done pretty well. It's not like crazy like like MCU or fast and furious type action but just as far as the fight scenes and stuff go it was done pretty well uh like i said it doesn't take itself too uh serious it embraces its goofiness and everything else uh and the two actors that really stood out in this movie was the lead actress um betty gilpin and hillary Schwank, who do an incredible job in their roles and especially in the the last fight like, the last fight is just crazy with both of them. Uh, if you don't like anything else to that point, that fight was... You're, you're going to enjoy the hell out of it. It does have B-movie type of humor and type of dialogue. And it has a lot of dark humor of sorts in there that a lot of people might find, you know, very entertaining. The reasoning behind the killings wasn't spectacular. It's like once the reveal comes, you're just like, yeah, is, is that really okay? Okay, whatever. Um, I was satisfied with the ending and how everything went about. Uh, like I said, it didn't take itself too serious, so I was along with it. The movie is over-exaggerated for what it was trying to do or whatever and what it did. And I felt like it was one of those movies that is worth checking out if that is your type of movie or how I just described it. Um, this is a hit for me. I definitely did enjoy this movie. I didn't walk out feeling disappointed or anything like that didn't have no real big expectations for it but i did like it and i did find myself enjoying it and i definitely would recommend it to people so if you're interested in getting either of the titles that's coming out this friday uh definitely check out the invisible man but yeah if you haven't seen the hunt yet definitely check it out it is worth uh it's, it is worth seeing now, to jump real quick, because uh, I'm not going to try and talk too, too much longer, because this podcast is already at 30 minutes, but um, let's get real quick into just the movies that are, well, that were supposed to come to theaters and that got pulled, so it's a lot of movies. That's going to more than likely going to be a lot more. So, like I had said earlier, A Quiet Place 2 was one of the big movies that's supposed to come out this week. Ended up getting pulled. It wasn't pushed to another release date, but just pulled, just kind of pending what's happening. Uh, if anything changes, theaters open up, or, you know, if it's get a little bit more safer. As well as, like, Mulan. Uh, <laughs> freaking, uh, just recently, Black Widow. Black Widow got moved from his release date. It is delayed. Uh, is it doing postponed, suspended, however you want to put it, you know. Um, but 
Black Widow joins that as well as Fury, well, like uh, F9, No Time to Die, the new James Bond film. And it, it's just, it's sad to just look at that. And so a lot of people go into, okay, Black Widow is, has been like delayed. What are things that they could do? You know, would they be able to just put it straight on Disney Plus? That could be an option. The only drawback about that is, is that if you do that, it's not going to make the money that it was supposed to in theaters. This movie could have potentially, and I say potentially because it did have the potential, could have been potentially been a billion dollar film. Putting it on Disney Plus on a subscription service, it's not going to make that. It's not going to make the money back. Uh, and as far as like just making it, putting it on like VOD where people can buy it, rent it and all that stuff. Even if you do that, it's not going to make the money. It's not, it, it's going to make a good amount, but it's not going to be anything like it would have had it been in the theaters. So what else do you do? The, the only thing that they can do is push it to a later date. Now it sucks because this isn't like any other movie. It's not like, Fast 9 or something like that. That they could just delay to next year. Two years from now. Like no. Um, this movie is a collective. A part of a bigger universe. More than likely. Even though Black Widow is a prelude. Because she dies in Endgame. Uh, it's like. This is a prelude to. Just events that happen. In you know. Uh, the Infinity Saga. But. It more than likely might have ties to the Eternals that's supposed to come out later on this year, which may, depending on the situation, may end up getting changed as well. Uh, might have a connection to Chang Shi, or I, I can't pronounce the name right. It might have connections to other movies. So it's not like they can just put this movie somewhere else. So if it has something that's relating to the Eternals or a movie that's coming right after it, you can't put it right behind it because... What they might give away in this in this movie may have to be put at a certain place right before this one and right before that one. So more than likely, if this get pushed back, let's say into November, Eternals is going to probably get pushed back into like May. And then Chang Shi is going to get pushed back, you know, so it's going to be like that kind of like a domino effect. You can't put one in this case, you can't put the first domino in fifth place in the fifth place of the other uh, domino you're gonna have to if you move this domino back you're gonna have to move the other domino back after that and go like that it's gonna have to go in order so that's the sp special circumstances surrounding this movie surrounding the other cer certain uh special circumstances so this getting pushed back is gonna have to push eternals pushback because i mean as far as i know i haven't seen the movie it's not anything that Anybody could pull out and be like, this has references to Eternals and stuff. So I don't know. But more than likely, there's some relevancy in this movie that does pertain to the other movies that are coming out after it. Uh, but if it doesn't, then they should just give it another release date for next year and just put it out in June or something like that or whenever. But they're going to have to push it back. Um, like I said, putting it on Disney Plus or putting it out for you know to rent on a stream you know it's it's not gonna make the money and they want that movie to make money because it is potentially may end up being a billion dollar movie and it's not gonna reach that potential if it does and i know kevin feige wanted this movie to be made like he fought for this movie to be made and for this movie to be put out and just kind of like sink it's like, I don't think that they will want that to happen. So they're going to make measures. But like I said, every movie studio aren't going to follow suit the way Universal did in WWE. Well, not WWB. <laughs> WB did, is doing with um, with uh, uh, Birds of Prey. But I feel like a lot of studios may take their smaller titles. Like, like I say, like a My Spy. Or certain movies that probably won't do gangbusters. They probably might put those out for rental the same day that it's supposed to have hit theaters. If the if everything is the way it is still now, movie theaters closed and all that stuff, they probably might end up still doing that. But man, it's just it's a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. 
going on nowadays with like the entertainment business. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and do a whole podcast from now on on just everything that gets delayed and pulled back and all that stuff. I'm going to probably make little quick videos and probably do that. But everybody knows that this might end up getting pulled. That might get pulled. So there's no real reason to keep going into every little detail unless it's really significant. But um, with that out the way, to end off the podcast, I'm going to give a quick update on this podcast itself. So this podcast is based off the box office. Based off the box office. Hence the name Box Office Talk. Uh, Week by week, I talk about the box office, what stood out and everything else, what's new to it and everything. Um, Next, for the foreseeable future, this podcast itself is going to be affected. Um, I'm more than likely, since a lot of the theaters are closed down, I won't be able to do it next week. There's no reason to do it. You know, there's not really going to be any box office earnings or anything else that significantly I can talk about. Now, if there is... I may have an episode next week, but as far as right now goes for the foreseeable future, box office talk is getting taken off, (laughs) you know, uh, and, uh, I'm still going to be doing all the other, um, box off. I mean, all the other podcasts, take one podcast, play one podcast and all that stuff, because they have elements to where I could keep talking about things and all that stuff. So, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe the Take One podcast may end up being affected. I don't know. But as far as shows and movies, they're being taken off the slate. And it's just, it's really not going to be anything to report as far as the box office talks. So um, this is the last episode until further notice. And that's really just kind of the update for this podcast. And um, yeah, that's really about it. Uh, like, thank you guys for joining me for this long extended episode. I think this is the longest episode of the box office talk that there has ever been. Uh, but, uh, like, thank you guys for joining me and until the next time I do this or just the next podcast that I do this week and next week, I will catch you guys later, man. Peace out. Hey, hey, before you guys leave, make sure you hit that like button as well as that subscribe button. And you see that little bell? Make sure you hit that to turn on your notifications. That way you'll be notified for anything that appears on my channel. Hope to see you guys next time. Peace out.